It's about a 10 hour and 55 minute flight. I'm also wearing this jumper and it says, just waiting for the caffeine to kick in. Maybe the air hostess will take pity on me and just basically give me a bucket of caffeine to sleep in. We've landed in Seoul. We're in the airport bus now. It's called an airport limousine and it's 10,000 won a ticket. And we're going into the centre. <laughs> Got a range of nun um, plushies and cushions. I've never seen a nun plushie before. It's snowing. There's heavy, heavy snow now, and it's just landing in my face. I'm finding this a novelty. <laughs> this is making me so happy. I stand west. We're now in a place called Kongi House, and it's basically porridge but made of rice. These are the different ones, and I think I'm gonna go for mushroom and oyster, and then also I'm gonna get some dumplings. First meal here. They give you these little sets. So we've got some squid here, some dried radish, and then kimchi, and then some tea. These are the dumplings. <laughs> look at these face masks. You can have ones that look like the characters, and you can also get Kung Fu Panda masks and Shrek masks. <laughs> This is the kind of stuff that you can get at 7-Eleven. Oh, I love going to convenience stores in different countries. This whole section is just ramen. So we're now back in the hotel room. We've kind of shopped a lot. Like the shopping here is incredible. And I've already done some damage in the form of some new Nike Sky High Dunks. Um, but I've been trying to look for them everywhere and I finally tracked them down in Korea so I couldn't resist. Um, and we also got this because we've heard so many good things about them. But they're cow bees, honey butter chips um but they are meant to be incredible oh my god they smell amazing we're now watching some k-pop uh, music channel and we're just chilling out because we're all quite jet lagged none of us have slept at all we're now in this famous chinese slash korean restaurant opposite our hotel um because it got highly recommended and it was all over the internet and then we managed to have a full on conversation and we ordered with the owner who speaks mandarin i haven't spoken mandarin in so many years i think the last time i learned it was when i was like 10 11 years old feeling very proud of ourselves right now this is our spread so we've got their famous black bean sauce noodles and then some kimchi, some sweet and sour pork, and some pan fried dumplings. Yum! We're back from dinner now, and we just met the sweetest man. He was the owner, and he was 71. And at the end, he gave us his like business card and told us to add him on WeChat. I'm going to put the restaurant down below, and if you guys are in Korea or in Seoul, then I highly recommend a visit, because just for the service alone was brilliant. We're going to call it a night and get up extra early tomorrow, um, and explore some palaces and go around Seoul a bit more and go on adventure. It's now the next morning today. Now we are going to walk over to the palace and it's kind of, I think it's called Cheonggokdong. First of all, I'm going to say to excuse my ignorance if you are Korean uh, for not pronouncing some of the words right. It's a bit nippy noodles today, so I've got my gloves on. I've got this colour changing little cap um, and my good old shilling jacket and my eyes are super watery today. I think I've done something to it. I don't know what. thinking that the kings um, and everyone over the past hundred years have also walked down these steps as well. Quite surreal. It's the first door I've ever had to duck and they used to make it super super small so every time anyone would walk past they'd have to duck their head and bow down as a respect sign to the king. Over here is the royal court and on the right hand side according to rank would be where the civil officials would stand and then on the left hand side where the military officials would all stand. This is where the king would have sat and the picture in the middle symbolises the king and it's the sun, the moon and the five mountains of Korea. They used to have these little pots outside the palace because most of it was all made out of wood so they used to fill it all up with water just in case it sets on fire then they've got an easy access to put the fire out. Certainly not a bad place to call your day-to-day -day office is it? 
are now doing the 11.30 English tour of the Secret Garden. We're now wandering around this village called Bokchon Hanok village, which is a traditional Korean one. It's so quaint and dainty and beautiful, um, and it's crazy to think that people still live here now. Well, this is all of our food. We've got spicy noodles, and we've got a couple of cold noodles and spicy sauce, and it comes with kimchi radishes and our miso soup. We've also got some spicy pork ribs with vegetables and an assortment of Korean pancakes. They have a hammock nap cafe here. Look, it's little hammocks where everyone just goes to sleep. Amazing. <laughs> I like these ones, nice and reflective. Lots of coffee shops and jazzy boutiques, so we're just going to wander down and find some coffee and dessert. We are now at a cafe called Jay Brown. We've ordered a whole chocolate ice cream roll, also sweet potato latte and Earl Grey hot chocolate. So we ended up eating the whole of that chocolate roll. It was rather a big roll, but we managed it. And we also drank all of the sweet potato latte, which strangely tasted exactly like sweet potato, but as a frothy, milky drink. Um, it was it was nice, but it was a bit weird. <laughs> we had a quick pit stop, changed our hats, and we're now at DVD Design Plaza. It looks like this, and we're here to see the LED roses, but. This district is famous for the 24 hour shops. You know how I'm free. Here you'll see 25,550 LED roses, and it's to commemorate Korea's 70th anniversary of its Independence Day. Good morning, everyone! It's the next day, and we're now full from breakfast, and we have an early start because we're going to Nami Island. So, thanks to my pal Michelle from daisybutter.com. I'll put a link down below because she is amazing, and you'll love her blog. She basically gave me so many amazing tips for Korea um, and recommended me to book this tour via a website called trazy.com or trazy.com. For 35 US dollars, you can get a tour um, around Nami Island, which is just off of Seoul, and also Petite France, which is a small France. Um, so we are going to Myeongdong Station, exit two, to meet for the shuttle bus and then the ferry over. And it, it's meant to be incredible in winter. And it's just tree lined paths and it's just a beautiful little island. We're now on the ferry and the journey takes five minutes to Nami Island. slippers now and we're now in a graphics exhibition. So we've stopped off at a Korea barbecue place and we've ordered some barbecue chicken with some soybean paste, bean sprouts and pork belly. We've also got some cold buckwheat noodles and kimchi. We are just chilling in this little snow island here and there's wooden reindeers, everyone's building snowmen and throwing snowballs and it is perfect. I want to spend the rest of my years here and be quite happy living in Nami Island in my own little world and to spend my time with reindeers and ostriches and ducks. I'm not really sure what's going on here except that She's got an extremely big boob and nipple and he's sucking off it while holding his penis. Um, yeah, interesting sculpture. Okay, I've just read about this. The breast actually references China's two major rivers, the Yangtze and the Yellow. It's meant to represent the maternal nature of the earth in a playful manner. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> We're now heading back from Nomi Island and we are gonna get the ferry and then go over to Petite Front. In a 
short drive away, we're now in Petite France. I'm very, very cute here, <laughs> and it feels like I'm back in Europe. Got the Eiffel Tower in the distance. bubbling pot here we've got cellophane noodles with a vermicelli and we've got rice cakes a mixed assortment of vegetables and cheese and then it's raw seaweed as well so it's the third day and it's going to be an interesting one because we're doing the DMZ, the militarised zone tour. We're going to be a very educational and eye-opening experience, so it's something I want to try and to kind of educate myself on, on the conflict of the war between the North and the South. The tour guide was explaining it, um, the history behind it and also the tragedy and the wars, and it was a bit chilling to hear about all the families uh, that have been torn apart from war and trying to see it through their eyes. It's devastating, um, so I don't know how much I'm going to vlog today because a lot of it is very sensitive information. But I'll try and vlog as much as I can, but also be very sensitive to the matter at hand. Uh, so yeah, let's go on today's experience. So I couldn't actually vlog inside the tunnel, but this is what it looks like. So you get a little walkway and you walk 358 meters down and it's very, very steep. Um, and after that you kind of walk all the way down there, which is up under the actual infiltration tunnel itself. And you get up to this point where you can look through to the second and the first blockade and then also the MDL, which is where it's barricaded by concrete into the North um, Korea. This is a mock-up of the third tunnel and it's located 73 meters underground. Round. Please do excuse the jet lagged appearance. I've just literally gotten back and started editing, um, but I didn't continue vlogging for the rest of the day um, on the DMZ and JSA tour. I just didn't think it was too appropriate to put it in a travel vlog because I didn't want to put jingles and editing behind it because it isn't a tourist attraction. But it just didn't feel right to include it because it's so highly sensitive. Anyone's watching his family has been affected by it. I really don't want to upset anyone, but I really do urge you to read up about it online because it's so important to educate yourself on what's happened uh, between the North and the South. Um, and it's a very, very eye-opening experience and it's one that will stay with me for such a long time. Um, but I hope you understand why I didn't want to vlog any of it. It's very, very educational and I am glad that I went along. But with that being said, let's continue on the vlog. <laughs> a bit of a rest and now we're going to go downtown to Myeongdong and get some bibimbap because we haven't actually had that on this trip yet so we're going to tick that off our list so let's go I sit here writing never knowing what to say these feelings always come to me like air this is the full spread we have kimchi pancake the beef in the hot pot traditional bibimbap and then we have bibimbap in a hot stone bowl <laughs> look at that egg Dessert time, we're at a place called Seoul Bing. We've got some ice cream, some yuzu, some shaved ice and then over here we've got some red bean paste, some black sesame and some chopped nuts And we've just spent the past hour and a half trying to find an ATM or a bank that's open on a Saturday. They can also accept our debit card. Frustration now over. Now let's go shopping. <laughs> ew, ew. They've now got lentil and broccoli face masks. So weird. Ew. It's now lunchtime and we've come oh. for tutu chicken oh. for some fried chicken. <laughs> and beer. Got some fried chicken, half a soybean, half a seasoned and half a plain fried. So we've got strawberry and green tea 32 centimeters. Everyone is queuing up for this store here and they're selling like a potato croquette kind of thing and they have it in either red bean, mustard, cream cheese or potato flavoured croquettes. So this is what the red bean looks like. It tastes like basically like a crispy donut on the outside and it's really sweet with the red bean on the inside. 
but it's yummy. It's basically a crispy donut. And it's real good. Mm. And then this one's the cream cheese, and it's basically a cream cheese donut. And it's amazing. Brilliant invention. Just a quick note to say that when you're getting a subway ticket, they charge you 500 won as a deposit, and then if you want to take it back, you just put it back in one of the deposit refund machines, and then you get your money back. And then this is what a subway station looks like. <laughs> oh, look how little shoe when the, the subway comes. That's really cute. <laughs> Monumental moment that we are all tall enough to reach this for once because in London I'm always too short. And then exit two for the shopping district. So this is what Airwell looks like. It is just absolutely filled with casual wear stalls, you've got shoes, small boutiques with just casual women's wear. Shopping heaven. This is the damage that has been done. It took us about two hours and we've pretty much gone through the whole area and we've bought everything. If you are a girl and you are into casual wear and you're into buying casual wear for very, very cheap, then I would recommend going to Ewa, uh, which is the Ewa Un Women's University stop here because everything starts from 10,001, which is about just under six pounds for everything from sweaters to dresses to skirts and they're all quite good quality and they're all very uniquely designed until you walk into every single shop and realize that they've all bought from the same wholesaler. We're about to hike all the way to Ensole Tower. Literally I'm a walking marshmallow. So this is what I'm just going to look like waddling down the street. So we kind of got lost trying to get to Ensoul Tower. Instead we found a nice little local restaurant um, and it's just manned by a little old man, a little old lady. And he is so cute and sweet and um, he's given us some peanuts and some Cheerio hula hoop looking thing. And we're good, we like Cheerios. So the first one we got was fish cake soup and then he served it up in a little bowl for us. We have kimchi stew and then inside we've obviously got some kimchi, some mixed vegetables, to ooh, tofu, fish, oh my goodness. Oh, it's all steamed up. Sorry, let me unsteam you a bit. There we go. This was only five, six pounds. Now we have kimchi pancake. So this is our meal and it was 30,000 won, so that is about 17 pounds, 15 pounds for all of this. And now the man is cutting up our pancake with some scissors. Come to have me there! Today is our last full day, but it's also Bonnie Bear Day! Yay! We're now gonna go down for breakfast, tick off a few things off our list before we go. And I've also curled my hair, what a momentous occasion. I never do anything with my hair because I'm quite lazy, so I just sometimes straighten it. But yeah, this is quite a big occasion if I'm curling. But now we're gonna head over for our buffet breakfast because I want me some steamed dumplings. We are now heading over to the main palace, which is called Gyeongbokgung. I hope I said that right, Gyeongbokgung. And it's the biggest palace out of the five and it was also the main palace that was used by the king. Um, and it's about 30, 35 minutes walk from our hotel. And I hope to catch the changing of the guards, which happens every day at 10, one o'clock and three o'clock. I'm liking also that I've got curls in. Okay, cool, let's go. Just choosing a handbook now. Quite like this one. This is what it looks like. So we've got a traditional turquoise one and then it comes out in a nice little probably pink. And it's so comfy as well, just wandering around. It's like, this would be very good if you've got a massive food baby and you want to hide it because it just hides everything. This just sums up the end of the trip so well to be able to really experience the traditional uh, Korean hanbok. And I absolutely love it.
feels a bit weird wearing modern day clothes after that now and my neon blinky jumper but um, that was such an amazing experience and it was only 3,001 which is about £1.80 and it's at Insadong Tourist Information Centre and now we are going to walk over to Guangzhou Market which is an incredible food market full with every food possible so we're going to fuel up, chow down and then head over to see Bonnie Fair in the afternoon but I'm so excited about this market because it was the kind of the one thing I really really wanted to do was just to eat everything in sight so these are the famous mung bean pancakes and this is them grinding up the mung bean it's just all here for all order some jap chai and some taboki as well got some jap chai which is glass noodles with sesame seeds spinach and carrots fish cake seaweed soup kimbap and the rest of our mung bean pancake which looks like this and it's savoury tasting as well and it's got bits of mung beans in it and bean sprouts and our final tabaki which is rice cake in spicy sauce the whole meal cost us 12,001 which is about £7 for all of that and typically we pay about 36,001 um, for all a full tummy which is already very very cheap and affordable so it's really worth visiting and you just get so so much different types of food to eat we're here for early birds so we can queue up to be at the front for standing and i want to be so close that i can see up justin vernon's nostrils and i'm not even exaggerating i want to be that close is it possible i don't know but we're gonna try <laughs> we weren't allowed to film inside for obvious reasons but we've just finished the concert got the t-shirt <laughs> literally we've got the t-shirt and it was incredible it's literally the best live um show i've ever ever seen and he was just still got goosebumps and it's not because it's freezing cold outside he was insane like there's literally no words for how incredible it was and it was worth flying 5,000 miles for and it was worth waiting eight years for and that has just made the year so far and he was magical they're all such a talented bunch and it's amazing so now we're gonna head back and get some food bye hotel room Bye, so. <laughs> yeah. All checked in now, I'm about to leave Seoul, but first we have stopped for food and we ordered two spicy buckwheat noodles with grilled pork neck and also oxtail soup. So we're gonna fuel up before we fly off. So right, we've got 100,001 left, which is only about 60 pounds. It's not as drastic as it sounds. And about 45 minutes before the gate closes, let's do some shopping. Now boarded and we're now on the plane, ready to go back to London. Um, for duty free, we actually managed to get 100 face masks because they had some crazy offer, which is yeah. when you buy 50, they give you 50 free and then 10% on top of that and then free samples. It's been such an incredible trip, I can't believe it's already been a week um, and I really want to come back as soon as I can, especially in that spring or summertime. So if anyone finds us a trip to Seoul, I'll be your Seoul sister. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye, good morning, good night, and see you back in London. Thanks so much for watching this uh, weekly vlog, and I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for coming along with me. Have fun. You're a real adult. That's not loud. You're not. <laughs>